What's going on? <laughs> oh, another bit of farmer. Just having a bit of a joke with Molly. I'm down, Damien. Please. Damien. One of the boys there had thrown solvent on him and flicked a match. I wouldn't do that. My mum taught me never to play with matches. I admire your loyalty, Molly. I just hope they're worth it. I want you to meet my friend Brad. Good I have him. Been hearing all about you. <laughs> Adam. Okay, you lot, that's enough. I want you out of here now. Can you stop that? I was doing the job. I thought he was wanted for questioning. No problem with that. But when you start a barroom brawl and send a man to hospital, then that indicates to me you're the sort of character I don't want working at my station. So, Maggie, how much trouble are we actually talking about? Heaps. I've never seen the boss so angry. And the ESD certainly won't be giving him any medals. They wouldn't actually chuck him out of the job, would they? At the very least, it's going to be a black mark on his record. I think it's going to be all up to Monica Draper. So did the boss have to call the ESD? The situation is serious as this, Dash. There's no option. Mount Thomas Station, Mount Thomas 308. Near the code 12 and 16 with engine party, the Mount Thomas Industrial Estate. The nearest point, you wreck, we fix panel beaters. Ambulance is on its way. You can either attend. Well, what is it this time? Mount Thomas 308, received that. We're attending the call. He said a little blue Jap shoebox drove straight up behind him. Hit him and drove off. It's Dimmick. Mr. Dimmick? Mr. Dimmick, that ambulance is on its way, all right? Now, did you see the car that hit you? All right, can you tell us anything else? She did this to me. That bitch slut Molly Beggs. Car, well, it's my dad's. He needed it. You have to go down to Melbourne. Okay. How'd you get here? See, there are, there are these things called legs. You walked. Gee, that must be why you're a detective. Hey, Molly, do you normally drive to work? Oh, look, it's two minutes by car, 20 on foot. I drive if Dad doesn't need the car. Okay, so when was the last time you saw Jeff Dimmy? <sighs> Yesterday afternoon in the pub. Have you spoken to him since? <laughs> I didn't speak to him then. Look, you were there when they put Dad's car up on that dump, so you've seen what he's like. Can I get off to work now? They'll give me a hard time if I'm late. We may need to speak to you again, Molly. <laughs> so don't leave town, right? Look, those bastards have been trying to get rid of me for weeks. I'm not going anywhere. Bye, Molly. Gee, she's got a good attitude, eh? Well, she could have done it. She could have hidden the car, run back. Oh, it's going to be easy enough to check a story. Mm, check the car. Remember, every contact... Leaves its trace. Whoever did it would want to eliminate the evidence. So check Sal's place. He does a bit of panel beating. Well, boss, we called in on the way back and there's nothing there that matches the description that Jeff Dimmick gave us. A little blue Jap shoebox. Ah, uh, well, there's still some Davids in the backyard shop shops, isn't it? Yeah, all right, we'll Croydon. check. Inspector Draper. Glad you chose to inform me before the incident hit the media this time. I want to speak to Constable Cooper. Has he rostered on today, or have you stood him down pending my inquiry? Oh, I didn't want to preempt your judgment, Inspector. He's on duty, but he's not in the station at present. Then call him in. Confine him to station duties until I've assessed the situation. All right, then. I'll be at the hospital taking preliminary statements and then at the incident scene. I'll expect him to be here when I get back. Morning, Inspector. Inspector. Morning. That old mon, she's a cheery heart, isn't she? Where is Cooper, anyway? Uh, he signed in early, which is the first, and he's taken the four-wheel drive off somewhere. Mm. Who else was on it? Uh, McKinley, she's doing the hit and run. Track him down for me, will you? Right out. Have you spoken to the Allenby boy's mother yet? Mm. I mean, if anybody had a strong motive to do Dimmick a mischief, it'd be her. Well, I'd be lying if I said I was sorry to hear that he was in hospital. Maybe a bit of pain will teach him a lesson after what he and his mates put my poor Damien through. Can you explain your movements today, Mrs Allenby? I was at the hospital. But we, uh, we picked you up at home. I left about nine after Damien went to sleep. I went to my ex-husband's place to water the orchids. He's interstate on business. Your ex-husband? 
Yes, we're still friendly. I keep an eye on things while he's away. Well, anyone see you? Only the orchids and next door's dog. What sort of car do you drive? An old blue Peugeot, but it's been at Sal D'Angelo since Saturday, mechanical problems. He said it'd only take a couple of days, but you know what mechanics are like. They're almost as unreliable as the police. This is Ellenby. Did you go by the U-Rack on the way home? It's not on my way home, not from the hospital. But you, you just said to me that you weren't on your way home. You just said that you were at your ex-husband's, isn't that right? My ex-husband, Constable, lives in Baronia Street, which is just around the corner. Look, are you saying that I had something to do with this accident? We're talking about attempted murder, Mrs Allenby. It's not an accident. Yes, well... That's got nothing to do with me. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have to get back to the hospital. I'll uh, drive you back to the hospital if you like, Mrs Allenby. After what your constable did to my Damien, no, thank you, I'd rather walk. As you like. Thanks for coming in. I think we can safely she cross her off the list. It's a It's not exactly a Jap shoebox, Just though, is it? Follow it up. Okay. Follow it up anyway, OK? And get on to John Farm and check out any employees, past or present. Looking for people who had a Jeff Dimmick's guts. It's going to give us a very long list. Went to the milk bar to buy a pie. I was on the way back when, wham, she gets me. It wasn't no accident. I heard a car accelerate. But like I said, a little blue shoebox. And why isn't anyone looking after me? I'm in pain here. I want something for the pain. OK, just relax, Mr Dimmick. X-ray's ready for you now. My dad. Tell him what happened to me. What about your brother, Pig Dog? Brad's on his way to Queensland. Or he'd sort out that little slag good and proper. Oh, you're an early bird. Well, give us a plate of worms. And speaking of worms, you seen Adam about? No, isn't he at work? No, no, what time you leave? Had an early breakfast and I didn't see him go out. Nick, yep. is there something wrong with Adam? No, well, uh, Stacey, why should there be? All that stuff yesterday and this morning he was really quiet. I, look, I don't know, really odd, but I'm scared he might have done something stupid. Oh, yeah, like what, resign? No, he's... He said that um, there was a way out of the mess he got himself into. I'm worried if anything's happened. No, no. You'll be right. Stay up. Zoe said Dimmy's got a fracture to his left arm, severe bruising along the right hand side, and mild concussion. He's off his face on pethidine at the moment, but we can talk to him this afternoon if we want to. All right, we need to get a proper statement. Keep on it, thanks. How did you go? I haven't seen him since he left for work, but Stacey's worried he might do something stupid. Are you looking for Adam? Because uh, he was on his way out when I arrived this morning to an abandoned car. Well, there is nothing in the job book. Get on the radio again. How was he? Did he seem OK? No, oh, he's got a lot on his mind. He's worried about the ESD. Yeah, so he should be. Mantoma Station, Mantoma 308 and local. Yeah, look, he could be in a dead spot. Get on to D24, check the location of the call out. Is something wrong? Well, probably Mantoma just Cooper Station, not following procedures, as usual. Yes, yes, Inspector, you don't have to tell me how irregular it is. Well, as soon as he makes radio contact, I'll have him come back in. Cooper's in all strife and a one legged uh, man in the pump. Cooper pumpkin. actually told D24 that he was just answering a routine call about an abandoned car, a Grey Hillman Minx. Well, it has to be in it, Hackett's. Hackett's, eh? So we've solved the Great Hillman Minx mystery. Yeah, maybe he thought he'd get back in your good books by finding the car. <laughs> well, at least we know he's on duty. Yeah, but that was two uh, hours ago. Where's he got to? Come on, you don't place any credence in his wife's idea that he might have done something else stupid, sure. Well, I don't know. You gave him a bit of a serve last well, night. Well, he deserved hard. a bit of a serve. Maybe he did. Cheer me up, why don't you? Where did D24 say the hillman was? Ah, uh, the complainant reported it just by the swimming hole near the weir. Well, that'd be the place they built on the river so the kids wouldn't swim in the town water. Somewhere. And what a waste of taxpayers' money that was. Mate, I mean, they swim everywhere, those kids. Yes, Mate, yes. Keep us having a dip. Yeah, well, let's hope he bloody drowns. Yeah. Mind you, we could have had engine trouble, I suppose. Well, he hasn't radiated for help, so... Well, we haven't been able to raise him. Maybe he mm. couldn't get through to us. He's probably sulking somewhere. Oh, you don't think he's trying to fix the car himself? Oh, yeah, that'd be right. That'd be real. I don't know. Just go out there and have a look, yeah, will you? Right. Hey, no time for tea. We've got a job to do. OK, what's the panic? What panic? Oh, yeah. Draper's ripping my head off about Cooper and Cooper's gone missing. Why panic? Hey, mate, do you know that car check you wanted me to do on June Allenby's Pugio? Mm -hmm. She's uh, had it in Sal D'Angelo's workshop all week. She's picking up this afternoon. Good on you, mate. Thanks for that. So that puts her in the clear. What about the rest of Dimmick's mates? Well, boss, we looked at the cars when we were there and there's no damage to any of them. Doyle, it is a panel beaters. 
Somebody could have used a car that was in for repair, then started work on it straight away. But Dimmick described it as a Jap shoebox. Nothing there matched that description. Well, his injuries aren't imaginary, so the car has to be something. Well, we're waiting on a list from John Farm on past employees. Maybe that'll give us a lead, eh? It's deep, isn't it? Nick, you don't believe all this suicidal stuff, do you? Well, the boss is pretty hard on him, and he's pretty upset about the Allenby kid, you know? Yeah, but I saw him this morning, and sure, he wasn't a barrel of laughs, but he wasn't suicidal. Now, did they say the weir, or did they say the swimming hole? What swimming hole? You were saying your husband was depressed. Tell me exactly what happened this morning. OK. When he woke up, he was, like, all worried and moody. About yesterday's incident? Yes. How he would you know, depressed. Stacey? He said he was depressed about what had happened at work and the fight he'd had. But you weren't actually with him last night. Adam asked me for a key to a separate room. Yeah, OK, it was this morning when he came to get his shaving stuff. We'd had a fight and I, you know, I didn't want to go telling everyone. It's our business, me and Adam. But it might explain something. What was the row about? I don't remember. It's just what happens in married life. It was something silly, but he was depressed about what had happened at work and he got in a really dark mood. Oh, for God's sake, Stacey, tell the truth. You obviously have a different version. All I know is that when Adam went up to see her, she was entertaining Brad Dimmick in their well, room. What's wrong with Her ex-boyfriend. And when Adam followed Brad back down again, he had a face like thunder. Boss, we've spotted the four-wheel drive down by the old swimming hole. Any sign of Cooper? Not yet, but we'll check it out. All right, keep me posted. Mount Thomas Station back on channel. You see? He's probably just wandered off and twisted his ankle somewhere. There's no sign of the Hillman Minx. Adam! Cooper! Adam! No, we'll take over the rise. Cooper! Nick! There you go. Cheers. Uh, how is he, Inspector? In surgery. Bullet penetrated his left lung and lodged there. Lung collapsed and filled with blood. Between lack of air and loss of blood, he's a very sick boy. Which means we can't talk to him till tomorrow and whoever did it's getting away. Senior Constable, did you see any indication of another person being at the scene? Uh, no, Inspector, I didn't. No, but we weren't looking. We should get back there. Crime scene are already out there. You can safely leave it in their hands, Constable McKinley. And mine. Is that quite clear? Coffee, please. Black, no sugar. Hey, this isn't a suicide. We need to be looking for evidence of another person. Yeah, and what can I do about it? Can't you and PJ make them work from that assumption? Hey, do you hear what the inspector said? It's her investigation. We've got better things to do, like informing the wife of a seriously injured police officer. Come on. Have you found him? Is he all right? Ah, uh, he's pretty crook. Where's his wife? Something's happened, hasn't it? He, he's dead, isn't he? No. He's in hospital and they're operating on him, but they're doing everything they can. He's in hospital? Yeah. You want to be with him? Yeah, of course. I don't know what I'm doing. Did he say anything about what happened? No, Stacey. He was uh, unconscious when we found him. We can give you a lift there if you like, Stacey. Yeah, all right, thanks. Um, I'll get my bag. Okay, how serious is it? Pull it in the lung. Did he do it himself? I don't know. Of course not. Inspector, uh, can I help you? No, I'm fine, thank you. 
You have uh, matters to attend to? Hit and run, wasn't it? Ah, uh, yes. Uh, Constable Doyle is doing vehicle checks even as we speak. Hey, PJ, yeah. crime scene say that three bullets were fired from Adam's gun. Three bullets. Vehicle checks. Oh, boss, we brought Stacey over. No, she's in the loo, powdering her nose. Give her a break. She's sick with worry. She's probably having a chuck or something. Well, are you still in surgery? Look, now that you're here, I'll get back to the station. Well, yeah, I'll keep you posted, boss. Good night. <clears throat> Nick? Mm hmm? There's something not quite right about Stacey. <sighs> no, when we went to the pub before and we broke the news, she instantly assumed the worst. Now, that's not natural. You just don't like her. You never have. <clears throat> oh, you get back to the station with the boss. Why don't you go back and I'll stay here? Oh, you're just the sort of person, aren't you, you know, to give her a bit of support, old Stacey? Sit down. You want to sit down there? Yeah. You want a cup of tea, dear? Okay. Right, you heard what she said. Stay away from crime scene. We just offered assistance. He's one of us. Listen, That's it's all. not as if we haven't got plenty else to do. How are you going with hit and run? Oh, Molly Begg's father confirmed that he was using the car. Mm. And there's no other leads until John Farmer comes good with the list of former employees. Well, get over there and don't leave until you've got it. And while you're there, check all the other cars in the place as well. I mean, if you're trying to hide a damaged vehicle, what better place to hide it than a body repair shop? I'm sorry, I just haven't had any time. I'm two men down and I've got You're to find some places. You're investigating an attempted murder, Mr Farmer, so, you know, this does take priority. Look, look, I'll get the list to you by the end of the day. That's the best I can do. Mr Farmer, we did see all your employees' cars this morning, didn't we? I think so. Except for the Civic that Molly drives, but you know that. And Jeff's car's still here, of course, and well, Damien doesn't drive him. Well, how does he get to work? His mother drives him. Always? Quite often picks him up, too. Can you describe the car for me, please, Mr Farmer? Well, not really. The boys were giving him a hard time and his mother was dropping him off around the corner. Over this last week, you mean? Well, as far as I know. Why? Just routine. They've sewed him up and they've pumped a couple of litres of blood into him, but the doctors aren't making any promises yet. Any doubt the bullet was from his own gun? Oh, I guess um, ballistics will tell us for sure about that. I knew he was having problems, but... God. She said uh, Sal hadn't lent her a car. Yeah, and she denied borrowing one from anyone else. Yeah, well, let's uh, check out the kind of car the ex-husband drives, eh? Oh, the ex-husband uh, who's conveniently in state. That's the one. Uh-huh. Where's everybody gone? Uh, PJ and Maggie are chasing up that hit and run, and uh, Nick's in with the boss. Right. If anyone's looking for me, I'll be at the crime scene. Inspector, have they found those missing bullets? No, not yet. Look, I know the area. Can I come with you? All right, McKinley. Just don't get under anyone's feet. So tell me what you think happened. I reckon he was set up. Uh, and? Well, whoever it was would need a car to get away, a real car. And they wouldn't want Adam to see it. So uh, what would they do? You'd only know about this place if you were a local, and if you are a local, you'd know the back way. And if your theory's right... What should we be looking for? Fresh tire marks, somewhere up there. Well, go on then, look. But Leo's with crime scene first. Uh, Sergeant. Over here! Looks like blood. And I reckon those are your tire tracks. Might have just been a flesh burn, but uh, even a 38 would do enough damage that you need medical attention. Check out the local doctors and see if anyone's needed treatment. Inspector, we can find out if he's gone back to town. Down there, the track fords the creek. When we go in the car, we can see his tire tracks in the mud. One set, he's come from Mount Thomas. Two sets, he's gone back the same way.
Brad's been shot. And? There's severe internal bleeding. The hospital let us know his progress. Now, Stacey, we've heard that you're having a relationship with Brad Dimmick. No, look, I've known Brad for ages. There was no reason for Adam to be jealous. But your husband did confront you about your relationship with Mr Dimmick. Look, I did invite Brad up to my room, but we didn't do anything. There's no privacy anywhere else, you know. Bloody Chris Riley's always watching and prying, and she's never liked me. Then Adam found you together. Yeah. Go on. And he just went crazy. He lost it completely. He made all kinds of threats. It was scary. That's why Brad decided to leave for Queensland. I mean, you know, if the coppers have got it in for you, what hope have you got? Sounding more and more like a murder-suicide bungled on both counts. Is that ballistics report in yet? Uh, yes, Inspector. Looks like the bullet that burned at Brad Dimmick came from Constable Cooper's weapon. Well, that just about settles it, then. Why can't it be Brad attacking Adam? The problem with that, Constable, is how Mr Dimmick could be sure it would be Cooper who responded to his call. Besides, Cooper wasn't rostered on until later in the morning. Could have been anybody taking that call. Could have been you. Your loyalty to your colleague does your credit, Constable. But where's your evidence? I just don't see Adam murdering someone over Stacey. Hey, mate, this is a vehicle check you wanted me to run. It looks like Damien Allenby's father's got a car which answers the description given by Jeff Dimmick of the one that struck him. Good on you, mate. Ta. We should have a chat with Mrs. Allenby. I told you I didn't have a car. But you were still driving Damien to work every morning this week until the accident. No, I wasn't. Well, I put it to you, Mrs Allenby, that you borrowed your ex-husband's car. It's the owner of a blue Cortina. We checked. It fits Jeff Dimmick's description of the car. Ran him down. What do you say to that? I told you I wasn't anywhere near there. I was at the hospital with my son. Well, we found a blue Cortina in your ex-husband's garage. There was a blue thread in the grill. Mrs Allenby, we contacted your ex-husband. He says you're the only one who had access to his garage. He said he was happy to lend you the car, but not to give you an alibi. How come? Why'd you do it? I wanted to go down and collect Damien's things. He might never be able to do that work again. And he really loved it. He was good at it. He was jealous of Damien's talent. You have to have a real flair for panel art. The things him and his mates did to my boy. <laughs> anyway, I saw him and and I thought somebody's got to do something, and, and and you lot obviously weren't going to, so I did. And I'd do it again. My boy's disabled for life. Somebody has to pay. The next time you fax off leap reports, complete them, will you? You home? Anyone there? I've got it. <laughs> All the boys know that, Dash. Bloody Stacey, I've worked out where she fits in. Give it a rest, will you? She was in the pub at the time, remember? Cooper shot Dimmick. No, I'm not saying that she pulled the trigger or that she was even there. But she was the only one who knew that Adam went to work early. She tipped Brad off. So what you're suggesting is that they planned this all beforehand? Why not? It's too cold but it's, you know, complicated setup with too many maybes. You got no proof, you got no motive. No, they haven't got a phone in their room. It's only that one there and the one in the office. Well, so you'd know if Stacey made a call early yesterday morning. No, not necessarily because she might have used the mobile Adam gave her. And if she'd used the mobile, then there'd be a record of who she's called. Thanks very much, Chris. The mobile phone company can give us a record of all the numbers that Stacey's called and the times. I'll bet you anything that one of those is to Brad Dimmick's to put him on. Well, June Allenby's confessed to the hit run. That's one yeah, positive outcome for the day. Did she say why? Revenge saw the opportunity and took it. What charges are in 10 later? Failure to stop, 
failure to report, for starters. Tim mm -hmm. murder. DPP will probably reduce the charge to conduct right, yes, endangering life. Oh, yeah. Bye-bye. There was a hospital. Adam's awakening to talk. Adam? This can't wait until tomorrow. You need to rest. No. I've got to tell you what happened. Mrs. Cooper, would you wait outside, please? It's an official interview. We'll be as brief as we can. How is he? You know, he's in pain. He's lost a lot of blood. Yeah, well, um, Dr. Hamilton said they're both lucky to be alive. Both? Yeah, Brad. Well, apparently he's pretty sick too. Have you been in to see him? I've been with Adam the whole time. Oh, right. She wouldn't know how I feel. You're nobody's wife. You know, it'd be a real shame if someone like Brad died. So young and sexy and... Be a few hearts broken up. Call came through. About the Hellman mix. Did he say anything? Well, we'll need to corroborate this, but looks like there might be some substance to your theory. He claims he was lured out there and attacked. I'll kill him! Where is the little weed? Mr. Dimmick! Mr. Dimmick! Murdering Mr. Dimmick. little bastard! Oh, all right. Got my brother on his own and shot him like a dog. Brad was worth ten of him and now he's dead. You charge, Cooper. <laughs> Mr. Dimmick, the matter's being investigated right now. If what we find supports your story, I assure you, you will be charged. <laughs> this is a nice uh, fat paycheck for your marriage that you've been sleeping with. Oh! Mrs. Cooper, how are you? It's good news about Adam, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it is. Actually, I've come to make a statement. Right, uh, come on through, huh? There she is, the late Constable McKinley. I thought you'd be in. It's payday. There you go. Uh, no joy for you with the phone company. They've got no record of any phone call from Adam's mobile to Brad Dimmick's number yesterday. Well, what about other numbers? Well, they'll send you a list and you send them an authority. So, Stacey, what do you want to tell us? Yeah, look, I've had some time to think about yesterday and everything, and, um... Look, I told you Brad and I didn't do anything wrong, which we didn't, but when Adam burst in on us like that, Brad got pretty angry as well. They had a fight, you mean? No, Brad left, but I spoke to him later. In person? Yeah, I met him, yeah, and... He was angry about the way Adam had spoken to me and the way he jumped to conclusion about us... And Adam had been giving him a hard time about his car and everything. Well, there was a question of its roadworthiness and a number of outstanding fines. 
Mark, please, go on. And um, Brad made some threats. He said he'd sort Adam out, and I never took him seriously. He's always had it in for the cops, and he's, he's got a big mouth, but I swear I never thought he meant it. But now you think he did? Yeah, I guess he must have. Maybe he thought he'd settle things before he went to Queensland. Uh, he was still planning to go to Queensland, wasn't he? Yeah, we had a farewell party and everything. Well, just, uh, hang on, hang on, you had a farewell party. Well, we had a farewell party. Well, when was this? Uh, last night at Brad's house. Right. Some mates put on some drinks. So you're off partying with your ex-boyfriend while your husband... That's kind of... No, 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 this I mean, is it's not, not my crap, fault. Stacey. I'm allowed to have friends if I want to. Brad and Adam just misunderstood. That's all. By the time they take out deductions for tax and health cover and super, there's nothing left. No, there's not, is there? Oh, please give Adam our best wishes, won't you? I will. Thanks. E triple S. Eh? Adam's death benefit payment from the police super fund. It automatically goes to his wife even if it's suicide. Oh, it's a hefty motive, all right. Be worth about three hundred grand, wouldn't it? Stacy would know all about it. Now, Brad could have acted alone and planned on marrying a rich widow. Oh, it's a bit of a gamble, eh? So we've got to prove it was a conspiracy. Well, it's easier said than done, wouldn't you say, Inspector? Conspiracy is notoriously hard to prove. You either have to have a witness to the agreement or a confession. Well, Jeff Dimmick, he might have overheard them. Yeah, he's going to tell us, isn't he? Maybe Stacy's going to crack. Speaking of Jeff Dimmick, there's a case we can finish off today. Off you go. What about Stacy? Just go with Nick, will you? Come on. Mr. Dimmick. Mr. Dimmick. <clears throat> Mr. Dimmick. What's up? What's up? Just two matters, sir. The first thing is I'd like to inform you that the car that struck you was not driven by Miss Molly Beggs. But I saw the bitch. Her car, little jab number. Sir, the woman who's in charge of the vehicle has made a full statement. It was not Miss Beggs. Oh. It was Mrs Allenby, Damien's mother. She knew what you were doing to her son at the shop. You and your mates. And that brings me to the second matter, Mr Dimmick. You're going to be charged with intentionally causing serious injury to Damien Marcus Allenby. Mr Allenby's laid a formal complaint. And you see this? That's a summons. That'll tell you when and where you are to appear to answer these charges. Do you understand that, mate? Do you understand um, it? Good on you. Mr Dimmick, now might not be such a good time, but uh, these are your brother's effects. I thought you might like to check through them before I hand them over to the police. That's not Brad's. He never had a mobile. That phone doesn't prove any conspiracy theory. Oh, what? Not even we can prove that Brad called the station on that mobile in order to lure Adam out to be shot. What's she going to say? She'll say I lost my mobile phone, Brad Dimmick must have pinched her. Yeah, yeah. Nick, I know she's involved. Yeah, well, proving it's another thing, isn't it? Chris, how is he? He's not too good. Stacy's in there with him. It's not like, like a rash. And maybe when you're up and about, we could go somewhere nice for a holiday. Adam, how are you? He's fine. We're just discussing the honeymoon we never had up. Honeymoon? And I'm going to nurse you back to health and make you forget what that bastard tried to do to you. Which had nothing to do with you, I suppose. Of course it did. That's why I feel so guilty. I believe Brad when he said he just wanted to be friends. I was an idiot. I was such an idiot. No. It's okay. So what is it that you want me to do? I don't know. I mean, are you sure you didn't overhear Stacy on the phone that morning? Look, I want to help Adam as much as you do, but I'm not going to lie about it. No, I didn't. I can't believe I'm being outwitted by Stacy Laws. Look, Dash, the reason Stacy went back to Adam is because she wants a security, right? And her preferred option died. So challenge the security. How? Adam, God love him, never could tell Stacy that he knew the baby wasn't his. It was Brad's baby. Thank you. Um, actually, could 
Could you do me a favour? Stacy gone? Chris called about some letter or a package. Package, or... I know I set it up. I need to talk to you on your own. What about? Stacy. Listen, she's explained Adam, to me. There is no easy way to say this. We're pretty sure that Brad and Stacy planned to kill you and make it look like a suicide. <laughs> we think that Stacy planned to get your death benefits payment, and the two of them could go off and live happily ever after. She wouldn't do that. Wouldn't do what? Wouldn't get a bloke to marry her just because she's pregnant and then forget to mention he's not actually the baby's father. How did you know that? I grew up here, remember? I don't know what Stacy's like, what her family's like. I'd heard all the gossip about why Brad left town in such a hurry. So why didn't you say something to me? Because there was no point then. <gasps> you should have said something. Yeah, well, I'm telling you now. Stacy gave Brad her mobile so that he could set you up for an ambush. It was in his effects. Crap. The phone companies confirmed that it was used to call the station that morning. No. They were in it together, Adam. And we've got to prove it. We need a confession from Stacy. Okay, we need you to use this. No, I won't do it. Adam, as far as the department's concerned, you are either a murderer or you're a suicide or you're both. The only way you're going to clear your name is to prove there was a conspiracy against you. None of it was your fault. She's my wife. She's my wife. What have you been saying to him? Just ask her about Brad, Adam. I told him about Brad. Ask her what's happened to the mobile. That, that is a lie! I told him Ask her Adam. why it was used to call the station just before you went out to look for that abandoned car. Just ask her! My future is with you, and we're going to buy a proper house and have a big family. You know, lots of babies to replace the one we lost. Don't lie to me, Stacy. I'm not lying, Adam. I love you. We can be happy like when we first met. Remember? When we first met, you were already pregnant. No, I wasn't. It was Brad's, wasn't it? I made up all sorts of excuses for you. She's just a kid. She's desperate. I was desperate. Oh. But then I met you and we fell in love. Don't talk I to me about tell. love. All you're interested in is sex. That's not true. Oh, yes, so why'd you screw Brad in our bed? I didn't. Dash was right about you. You're worthless. You're nothing. No wonder Demick ran out on you. He came back for me. <laughs> sure. He did. He came back to look after me and our babies. He said he loved me. Yeah, he loved you so much he'd only take you with my money. No, he came back for me anyway. He said the money was just the icing on the cake. So you did conspire to kill me? You and Brad? Yes. But you'll never be helped to prove it. The credit, you know. Of course, it's up to the coronial inquest to bring down an official finding, but my report will indicate that Constable Cooper acted in self-defence in shooting Bradley Dimmick. Good. If it hadn't been for Constable McKinley's persistence, the outcome may well have been very different. Uh, persistent is one description of her, I suppose. However, 
In the matter of Cooper's attack on Damien Allenby, my findings are much less favourable. No matter how much personal pressure he was under, there's no excuse for his behaviour. No. Mind you, to be fair, I think he really believed that Allenby was still wanted for questioning. Well, that may be. But I'm advising that there be a full ESD inquiry as soon as Cooper's well enough to appear. I'm sorry, Tom. I'll be keeping my eye on McKinley. She's a bit undisciplined as yet, but she's bright and determined. She might make a good detective one of these days. Hi. Hi. Just dropped in to see how you were. Okay, I guess. I'm sorry. But I had to tell you. Yeah, I suppose so. Has she been charged? With conspiracy to murder. For about four to six years. Where is she now? Bailed. Her dad eventually. Mm. So she's right back where she started. Adam, don't feel sorry for her. She's not worth it. I wish it was that easy, Dad. It'll get better. It'll get better. 